Hi, we're going to do um, section 3.5 in the Intermediate Algebra book, which is a factoring review. Now, this is just going to be a review. I'm not going to do every example in this section because there are 28 examples. If you need a more detailed review than I'm giving right here, I will link some other videos down below in the description for more detail. We're going to start with example two. Uh, the directions for all these examples are factor. The expression says 24 m6 n to the fifth plus 15 m squared n cubed. Uh, the first type of factoring we're going to talk about is factoring out the GCF. To factor out a GCF, you look at the coefficients you choose the greatest common factor. The largest number that will divide evenly into 24 and 15 is 3. And then you look at your variables. You have m6 and m squared. You choose the smaller exponent. So the GCF is m squared. Same thing with the n's. The GCF is n cubed. And factoring out the GCF is like undoing distributive property. So inside your parentheses, you're going to have what's left if you were to distribute this times this to give you back your original expression. So the process is a division. So you're going to take your original expression here. You're going to divide it by your GCF, and the result is going to come out in the parentheses. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. When you divide the variables, you subtract the exponents. So you'll have m to the fourth n squared. And then we do the second term. 15 divided by 3 is 5. m's cancel because they're the same. And n's also cancel because they are the same. When you factor out the GCF, you should be able to distribute to get back your original expression. The next example we're going to do is example 5. Let's see. Example 5 says factor y cubed times 7y minus 4 plus y times 7y minus 4 minus 2 times 7y minus 4. Um, it is possible for your GCF to actually be a binomial, and you can see this binomial of 7y minus 4. It's common. It, you see it in all three of these terms. So the GCF is the binomial 7y minus 4. So we'll bring that to the front. When you factor out a common binomial, you are taking it out of all three terms to bring to the front. So what's left in the parentheses is these terms, this part of the term, that you did not factor out at the beginning. So y cubed plus y minus 2 comes from here, here, and here. All right, we're going to do example 8, which says 2y squared minus 14y minus 5y plus 35. Um, the first thing we recognize is that there are four terms here. There is nothing common for all four of these terms. In other words, they there is no GCF. So to factor an expression that has four terms, we're going to cut it in half and do GCF on the front and then on the back and then overall. So we're just going to do GCF three times. So first we look here in the front. The GCF here is 2y. When we divide it off, we have y minus 7. Then we bring whatever this sign is, we're going to bring down. So we have a minus sign. And then we look here, what's common. The GCF here is 5. So we're actually factoring out a negative 5 because of this negative sign that we brought down from here. Um, so this might be easier to see what happens if you actually put the negative 5 in the division here so that you can figure out what goes here in the parentheses. When you divide by negative 5 on this first term, you're left with y. When you divide by negative 5 here on the second term, 
you end up with negative 7. Oh, so I need to erase that plus sign. Shouldn't be there. But it won't erase. There we go. So this division comes out to be negative 7, not positive 7. So GCF in the front, GCF in the back, being careful of the signs because we factored out a negative 5. And you can check this back by doing distribute here. Negative 5 times y makes negative 5y. Negative 5 times negative 7 makes positive 35. But then you notice, like above, that the y minus 7 is common. So your big GCF here is y minus 7. So we're going to bring that out to the front. And then we take it out of each term, and we can see what's left for the second parentheses is y minus 5. The next example we're going to do, if I could scroll this, maybe. All right, the next example we're going to do is example 10. We're going to factor some trinomials. We'll start with x squared plus 7x plus 10. And if you remember about trinomials, when you multiply two binomials together using double distribute, if you remember double distribute, or what some students generally call FOIL, these binomials will multiply together and combine like terms to make a trinomial. So your job when you're factoring is to tear apart this multiplication and figure out what these two binomials should be. Of course, if we start with x squared where there's a coefficient of 1, we know that that will be x times x. And then we can talk about the signs. These are all plus signs, so generally the first sign can come down. And then if you multiply these two signs together, it will tell you what the third, second sign is. Positive times positive makes positive. So these are both positives. When you have same signs, that means your two numbers will add in the middle. If you have different signs, they will subtract. So these are an addition. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make 10, but add to make 7. So of course, the two numbers that multiply to make 10 would be 5 times 2, and those add to make 7. So we write the biggest one first. You can always check this by using your FOIL or double distribute, and you'll see that, you know what, let's, let's do that in a different color. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x plus 5x plus 10. And combining like terms gives you x squared plus 7x plus 10. So your factors are here. We're going to do one more of these type of trinomials. Number 11, x squared minus 2x minus 63. We call this a standard trinomial. When the lead coefficient is 1, you can factor it in all one step like we did before, putting your parentheses in. We know that x squared comes from x times x. With your signs, you can bring the first sign down. So this is a negative. And then you can multiply these two signs together to get the second one. So negative times negative makes a positive over here. And this is an example where we have different signs. Different signs mean these two numbers will subtract in the middle to make this middle. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make 63, but subtract to make 2. Um, if you know your multiplication facts, you know that that's 9 and 7. So you can check this really quickly by saying negative 9 plus 7 makes negative 2. Negative 9 times positive 7 makes negative 63. All right, the next one we're going to do is example 14. And this is actually it's still a trinomial. But now we're moving to more complicated trinomials that have a lead coefficient that's more than 1. So when the lead coefficient is 1, like the two examples above, we call them standard trinomials, this is a lead coefficient of more than 1. There are several different methods to factor this type of trinomial. 
I'm going to show you what's commonly called the AC method. Uh, most algebra teachers like it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the AC method involves you first multiplying your lead coefficient times your constant, and that of course is the A and the C from standard form. 2 times 6 is 12. I always write it out to the side. It's what I call a key number when you're using AC method. You're still looking for two numbers now. It's as if this 12 is replacing this 6. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to make 12, but add to make 7. And I know that you know your multiplication facts, so that's 4 and 3. What you're going to do with those two numbers is you're going to now break this 7x apart to make two terms using the 4 and the 3 as coefficients. So that would be 4x plus 3x. It's still 7x. 4x plus 3x is still 7x. You've just broken it apart to be two terms. And now I'm going to bring down this beginning and this end term here so that my expression is still is complete here. Now that I have four terms, I'm going to cut it in half and factor by grouping like we showed earlier in this video. So when you factor by grouping, you do GCF in the front. The GCF of the first two terms is 2x. You divide it off, you get x plus 2. You bring down that middle sign. Whatever that sign is comes down. The GCF in the back is 3. When you divide it off, you have x plus 2. And now you see the x plus 2 is common. So you can pull that x plus 2 down. And you take it out of those terms to see what's left to go in the second parentheses. And that's going to be 2x plus 3. You can, of course, multiply this out using double distribute, and it should make the original expression there. We're going to next work on example 20, which is 16x squared plus 40x plus 25. And this is a special kind of trinomial that we commonly call a perfect square trinomial because there's perfect square here, there's a perfect square on the end, and there's a plus sign here. If you have those three elements, the perfect squares on the ends, and the plus sign, you can take a shortcut to factor this as a perfect square trinomial. Um, to do that, you take the square root of the first term, what expression times itself would equal this, and that would be 4x. The square root of the n term, what number times itself makes 25, and that would be 5. And then you check the middle term, so by multiplying these together, 4x times 5, and then doubling it to check to make sure it makes 40. 4x times 5 is 20x. When I double it, it does make 40x. So then I just pull down whatever this sign is here. I will pull down in the middle, and I will put a square on it. That's an ugly-looking square. It's more like a z. And your factoring is done. Um, of course, this means 4x plus 5 times 4x plus 5. Writing it as a square here is just a shortcut. And you could have done this with AC method like we did before. Um, the hard part about this question using AC method was you would have had to multiply 16 times 25 to make your key number, which is a pretty large number, and then find factors of that that add to make 40. So the, the reason this shortcut is useful is with these big numbers. There's a lot of perfect square trinomials that have smaller numbers that you can just use AC method on and it works just as well. The next example we're going to work on is number 21. 81 x squared minus 25 y squared. And this is called a perfect square, tr uh, I'm sorry, it's called the difference of squares. Let's write this out here the difference of squares. The difference of squares is always a binomial, two terms, that has perfect squares for each term. 
difference, of course, meaning it's subtraction. If there's a plus sign here, it doesn't factor. So if it's a subtraction of two terms that are both perfect squares. There's nothing, there's not a process here, it's just something you have to recognize and remember. When you see it, you're going to factor it into two binomials. The square root of the first term, what number times itself makes 81x squared is 9x. That goes there and there. The square root of the second term, what number times itself makes 25y squared, and that would be 5y. And then the signs are 1 plus and 1 minus, and that's why when you multiply this out it makes a binomial and not a trinomial, so we're actually going to show it here so that you can understand this. 9x times 9x is 81x squared. 9x times negative 5y is negative 45xy. And then again, 5y times 9x, but this time positive, 45xy. And then at the back, positive times negative, 25y squared. 5y times 5y. And you can see that when you get ready to combine like terms here, these middle terms cancel each other because of these opposite signs, and that's why we put opposite signs into our factors up there. So this makes 81x squared minus 25y squared. When you're factoring it, this of course would be your factors right here. This is a check to make sure it works. These are your factors right here. The next example we're going to do is number 26. It says x to the fourth minus 81. And this is like we looked at before, the difference of squares. Both of these terms are perfect squares, and there's a subtraction here. So to factor the difference of squares, we put in our parentheses, we take the square root of the first term. What number times itself gives you x to the fourth? And that would be x squared times x squared gives you x to the fourth. And then what number times itself gives you 81 would be 9 and 9. The signs are 1 plus and 1 minus. However, because of this fourth here, and we have x squareds here, we're not finished because this binomial down here is difference of squares also. You see the perfect squares and the subtraction. So this binomial will factor down again. So when you're factoring, you have to factor everything down as far as it goes. This one, the, the, the addition, does not factor again. So we're not going to change that one. But this one, the subtraction, does factor. So what number times itself makes x squared would be x times x. The square root of 9 would be 3 times 3, 1 plus, 1 minus. So these are your factors. And if you took the time to multiply all that out, you would get your original expression, x to the fourth minus 81. OK, the next example we're going to do is number 28. And this is factoring using multiple methods. So we're going to start with 48x cubed y minus 27xy cubed. So I, at first glance, most students are going to look at this expression and say, I have no idea how to factor this because it doesn't look like anything I've looked at before. Whenever you're factoring any kind of expression, the first step is to look for a GCF. So when we look at these coefficients, we look for what is the largest number that will divide evenly into 48 and 27. And that happens to be, in case you didn't know it, 3. And then we look at the variables. OK, this is an x cubed. This is an x. We choose the one with the smallest exponent. And that would be just x to the 1. Same thing with the y's. So we've got a y and a y cubed. We choose the one with the smaller exponent. And now we have a GCF. To figure out what belongs in the parentheses, then, we divide by the GCF. So we're going to divide this term by this, and we'll get this here. So 48 divided by 3 is 16. x cubed divided by x here. Remember, you subtract those exponents. makes x squared. And the y's cancel, since they're the same. Then we have a subtract. And we do the same thing with this term when we divide it by the GCF. 27 divided by 3 is 9. The x's cancel this time. 
because there's a 1 and a 1 exponent. The y's, y cubed divided by y, subtract those exponents, gives you a y squared. Now, you look in the parentheses to see if you can factor this any further, and this happens to be the difference of squares. Perfect square minus another perfect square. Your GCF is still going to be here. It doesn't go away. But now you can factor your difference of squares. The square root of the first term is 4x, and that goes here and here. The square root of the second term is 3y, and that goes here and here, and the signs are one of each, 1 plus, 1 minus. So this would be your fully factored form here. All right, like I said before, this is a quick review of all kinds of factoring. Um, if you need more detail, check the description below this video. I'm going to link it to more detailed videos. If you want to see some more of any specific kind of factoring, uh, check out those links down below. Thanks.